This is Zach with Grow Freedom 1776 and Silver Sage Landscaping Garden. Today's video will be about grow light selection and the different options you have. Uh, the first thing we'll go over is um, fluorescence. T8s and T5s. Um, the T8 used to be the most efficient bulb and then they came out with the T5. It, it's basically the size of the tube um, in millimeters. Uh, the T5 is the most efficient bulb for light output and a lot of um, suppliers you can get uh, lots of different color spectrums, light intensity and all that stuff. So you have a lot of growing options with this and you can grow a plant to maturity with that, but you will not have the uh, canopy penetration that you would with like bigger lights, uh, but they're great for propagation and seed sprouting. The next thing we'll go over is LEDs in the strip form. Um, there is a lot of manufacturers that make the strips in lots of different color spectrums, usually um, a broad spectrum, more for vegetating and propagation. Uh, these are great low intensity bulbs that will, um, you know, sprout plants and uh, root cuttings very well. Um, you know, you do have to pay attention to the manufacturer specs in the sense of the height that you pull them off the plant because the light can be kind of... Um, with the diode can be really directed areas in what they call hot spots and burn plants. So make sure you look at the specs on that and lift them off there. But you have, those are probably the most efficient um, propagation lights you can get. But can they, they can be pricier than a T5 or T8 bulb. The next grow light system we're going to talk about is HID, high intensity discharge uh, lights. Uh, there's the HPS bulb, high pressure sodium bulb. Um, this is going to be in the red spectrum. The components of this grow light is going to be a ballast, which is going to be a box that houses um, components that will convert your 120 or 220 to efficiently dump the wattage to run the light. Uh, then it'll go to your hood, which will uh, give you a socket to screw your lamp into. And the hood also has a reflective material to direct the light down at the growing area. Uh, the lamp or bulb is going to, uh, there's lots of brands. There's, um, you know, you know, I would probably stick with something that's in the grow light spectrum because there is commercial uh, bulb sizes, especially for your 1,000 watt and 400 watt series. Um, I would stick with the grow light. You can spend a lot of money on your lamp or a little bit. Um, this is your input, one input that is very important to your grow system. So don't go completely cheap. I would say mid-grade uh, to upper end is probably what I would spend on your lamp. Um, in the sense of your ballast, there is um, digital ballast, which are a lot more efficient uh, than the old magnetic ballast. Um, they do cost more, but you can run uh, metal halide and HPS off these systems. Uh, with magnetic ballast, you can save a little bit of money. Uh, they do have convertible ballasts that are in magnetic, but they'll have to have a switch, which just switches over from different components in the same box, where the digital ballast it just can run both systems out of the same ballast. Um, pros to this system is you have a, a lot of light and it, it's very bright, intense light that's going to penetrate a, a canopy very well um, and allow you to grow taller plants, which you, then you are using more of your um, cubic foot in your grow space. Um, Cons to this system would be that it produces heat that you're going to have to get rid of uh, and vent out one way or another. 
Um, and it is their energy hogs. So this is going to be a big draw on your power. Um, and that ups the cost of your grow. Um, there's also metal halide. Um, they are in the blue spectrum where the HPS or high pressure sodium is in the red spectrum. That would be used for flowering. Metal halide would be blue spectrum, which would be for vegging out, um, out of a, a propagation if you're trying to age it a, a few more weeks before it goes into fruit and flower. Um, uh, they both have the same cons and same pros, um, but that is the HID systems, metal halide and high pressure sodium. The next systems we're gonna talk about are high intensity LED light systems. You'll see a lot of knockoffs on Amazon and online sources, but I would get a reputable brand um, when it comes to these systems. Uh, you can find them on Hydro Farm, usually at your grow supply stores. Um, and you know, if you can find a brand and then find it online, that's fine. But you can see a lot of these knockoffs that you'll find in um, on Amazon and eBay, and they come right out of China. They try to knock off something. Uh, the thing with LEDs, um, you know, these big companies have done a lot of research to get the efficiency and the output and not burn up diodes due to heat. The diodes are very susceptible to heat. And um, if they don't get rid of those that heat with good ventilation and fans, you're going to burn up diodes. So you'll have a cheap, fairly inexpensive light, but it may not last as long if it doesn't get rid of that heat with heat sinks and, and fans. Uh, so, you know, just be careful when you buy these. Uh, you can fully grow uh, plants out under these high intense uh, LED lights. Um, you can get with some of the brands, you can get just about as much the out, same output as you would get with a high pressure sodium metal halide. Um, but uh, it's gonna cost you more up front in the sense of your bulb, but your energy use is less. So, I mean, the pros, I guess, would be that, you know, you're using less energy, you're getting the same output. Um, a con would be that it costs you a lot more up front for the equipment. Um, you're gonna have that energy bill the rest of the time you're growing. So, I mean, if you can come up with the money, it's not a bad plan of action. The next thing we'll go over is compact fluorescence and their use in growing. Um, they are very efficient, um, but you don't get a lot of surface area with them. Um, so if you're trying to grow over a large area, um, you know, they're not bit the best. You know, they're really good for like sustaining an indoor plant or if say you're bringing in some plants from the outside your patio and you're just trying to get them through a winter. Uh, their light is very directional, so they'll be good at that. So they're intense and directional. Um, but other than that, I think for your power use, you're just not getting much surface area. Um, you could be a lot more efficient. Uh, you, I have seen people make things that try to make grow lights that are reflective and stuff like that. Um, and if you're a tinker, that's fine. But, you know, they have light engineers that de design these things to give you the most output for the electrical input um, so I kind of would just stick with that um, they have their use and they, they go into an average socket so it makes it very easy to uh, put a grow light somewhere it's just I would not say it's the ideal grow light uh, for performance that's going to conclude this video on grow light selection. Um, if y'all have any questions, comment below, like, comment, subscribe. We appreciate any support we can get. If you have ideas for videos, comment below. I'm Zach. I'll talk to you later.